Okay, we're back, and this time we are going to do a tutorial that was requested by quite a few different people. Uh, we have uh, had a coroutine tutorial in the past, and uh, it should get you a good basic understanding of coroutines, so now we're going to take that to the next level. Uh, the question we get asked a lot is, how do I pause a coroutine? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just make what's called, uh, we're going to call it our job manager. And uh, this is going to allow us to, to use the, the coroutines we're already using in our code, but it'll give us a little bit more power. We'll be able to pause them, we'll be able to, to kill them at any point, we'll be able to add child coroutines, you know, so you can have a whole group that are executed in series. So it'll basically just give us some more power for use with our coroutines. So what we're going to do is uh, jump into this and we're going to go through this quick because there's a uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of little things, but only really a couple blocks of code that actually uh, have some good information that need explanation. So the job manager, you can see right here in the good old comment, it's just a proxy object. So the job manager is basically only purpose for existing is so that we can get a hold of this instance and call instance.start coroutine. So the reason we, uh, we want to do that is we don't want every single job to inherit from mono behavior. That would require us to have, uh, have all of our jobs be added as components onto a game object, and we would have to then uh, let them start their own coroutines. So we're just going to set this guy up and let him be able to create our coroutines for us. So there's, there's nothing happening in this class. It, it's literally just a proxy. We, uh, we release instance and application quit just so that the garbage collector can clean them up. And that is all there is to it. So the job class is going to be the class that encapsulates our coroutine and uh, allows us to, to do the magic of uh, pausing, stopping, you know, whatever else we want to do to it. So let's, uh, let's stick some instance variables in there to start off. And uh, we got an event here. If you don't know about events yet, then check back to our first tutorial. And uh, I believe every other tutorial since then has used events. They are incredibly handy. You should be using them if you're not already. And uh, we just have a job complete event that has one parameter, which is a Boolean. And the reason we pass back a Boolean is uh, we just let you know once it's done if the job was killed or if, it's, uh, if it completed on its own. So if it was killed, then the Boolean will be true. Otherwise, it'll be false. Uh, here, we're going to want to be able to check if a uh, coroutine is running or if it's paused. Uh, you know, if we, if we have the ability to pause it, we might as well be able to check to see if it's paused. And uh, same for running. So those are uh, you know, pretty basic attributes we'll want access to. So next up is going to be our private stuff. So uh, first thing we need is uh, an I enumerator, which is going to be the actual coroutine that we're managing. That's, uh, this is the fundamental piece of information that we need in here. Everything else is just helpers for that. Uh, if you remember, we had on the job complete, we have this Boolean where we let you know if it was killed or not. So here's where that comes into play. We just, uh, we save state and when we do get a kill, that way we know. And uh, this is uh, something that's gonna be a, an optional piece of this class that we're gonna add just for fun. We have a, we can set up child jobs. So we can have this one parent job that has one or more zero or more actually child jobs and it will uh, it will execute all the child jobs before it calls its job complete event so just a little added benefit there first thing I'm going to do here is just uh, dump in some constructors and helper methods so basic constructor takes in a coroutine because we we need some I enumerator to manage or this isn't going to do much for us. Uh, and then we have one with an optional parameter here, which is uh, should start. And you can create a job on the spot. And if you have this set to true, it'll start immediately. Now, uh, some of the power comes in when you set should start to false. Because if should starts false, then our job is starting out in a pause state. So it's not going to be running yet. And uh, that'll lead to some very interesting uh, instructions there that we'll see in a little bit. So uh, these are just two helper functions for making jobs. So uh, you know they're static, so we can say job.make and then just pass in the coroutine, or uh, job.make and pass in the coroutine and should start. 
and that's all for that. So let's now take a look at uh, our public API. So some of the things we're going to want to do with this are stop it, pause it, unpause it, kill it. So uh, I have a pretty good idea what the public API is going to look like, I imagine. So from the top here, this is, uh, and we'll, we'll just go through these one by one. So uh, this is, again, just uh, another uh, little helper method. So this is going to be for the child jobs we spoke about before. So create and add child job, we just pass in the coroutine, and, uh, and all it does is create a job and add it as a child. So the reason this method exists is just in case you forget to pass in the false parameter. It's kind of a, you know, this would be kind of a, the way I would suggest using child jobs. If you, if you just use create and add child job, it'll remember leaving your child job not running to start with. Now you can also just say add child job, and that's totally fine as well. And that uh, that'll that'll work as well. Just remember that your child job should not be running when you pass it in here. Uh, well, we could just take a quick look at this. So it creates the stack on demand, and uh, the the reason for that is in most cases you're just going to be running a single job, so there's no use uh, creating that child job stack if if uh, majority of the time it's never going to be used. So we just create it on demand. And stick it in there. Uh, remove child job. Exactly what you'd expect. If you have a whole bunch of child jobs and you want to get one out of there, you just call remove child job. That's a bit of an ugly method because uh, it is a stack that we're using here. So we could have used a list or a queue, but uh, I chose a stack because it seemed to make sense in the situations I was using. But could just as easily have been one of the others. And uh, stacks don't really have a way to do. You know, like a stack.remove method. So uh, this method just takes care of removing the object if it exists in there. And now is on to the, the controls of this job. So we have a start method and uh, start will set running to true. And then remember that job manager we talked about before. That's where this comes into play. So I, we don't have a start coroutine method on our class because our class is not a model behavior. Our class is just a you know, basic uh, object. So it doesn't have the start coroutines. So that's where this comes in. All of the jobs are going to use the job manager instance to call start coroutine. And that's, you know, that's its only purpose. So that we have a way to call start co coroutine on there. Uh, we also have uh, a helper method here that will start. It'll call do work just like this one does. The only difference is it'll yield return that call. And this method needs to be called in a start coroutine itself. The reason for this is if you uh, if you want to say start coroutine and then on your job say job.start is coroutine, you can then yield that call and you'll know exactly when it's done when it returns there. Okay, so we have pause method that just sets pause, to unpause, sets pause to false, kill. So we're just going to set that job was killed we talked about previously to true so that when we call the job complete event handler it will uh, be able to pass back that it was killed and it, it uh, did not die a natural death it was murdered so then uh, we set running to false pause to false and that will effectively kill the coroutine and we also have a kill uh, delay in seconds so you can kill this after a short delay if you wanted to uh, that could come in handy in a variety of reasons uh, Leave those up to your imagination to come up with. And that covers our entire public API. So what we've seen is just a, a bunch of stuff that basically just flips bits on Booleans. Uh, we didn't actually see any of the any of the goods here. So let's have a look at the method. We saw it uh, being called the do work method. This is where all the magic happens in this class. So it's, it's actually a pretty simple method. It's uh, an I enumerator itself. So we call do work, and we're just going to have a loop here. And all we're going to do is, uh, while it's running, we run through. And if it's paused, we do yield return null. So as long as paused is true, it'll just keep yield returning null on this. And that's how we allow coroutines to be paused. 